Hi, this is Mark from SM Postcards again. So today, I got a whole bunch of stuff to go over. I'm going to do another what's sold. I'm going to walk through what we sold on eBay, Etsy, and HIP. We have a total of 23 postcards sold uh, overnight. <coughs> there was 18 on eBay, 3 on Etsy, and 2 on HIP postcards. So you're going to get a good variety in this video, throughout the video, and I'll break it up with other things of what people are buying, what you should be looking for when you look through the boxes, what you know, what you should be listing. And I'll show you the card if I know anything about it and basically what I sold it for. The next thing I have for a special topic today is skyscraper postcards. Now if you put in search skyscraper postcard, you're gonna get all different ones, linens, chromes, and stuff like that. But these were specialty cards. I don't have a lot, a lot of information on them, but I'll show you what they are and what to look for in the special topic, and we'll get that in, in between the what's sold. Then I have another term, terminology, if I get that right, terminology, it's called rural free delivery. A little history on the rural free delivery and how that came about. And then I have a bunch of viewer comments. A lot of people are commenting, they like the viewer comments. It gets into a little insight on how I do things, and they can pick up things. So stick around for that uh, later on in the video. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. On the cards, we had 18 cards sold on eBay, so I'll do a bunch here. I'll do the special topic and do some more. So the first one sold is one of the naval ships. If you've seen the video on the 20,000 postcards that I bought, this is the Theodore Roosevelt. It's an aircraft carrier, and it's going through the Suez Canal, Operation Desert Storm. And I have about 133 of these left. Now, this one does have some curving, if you see that. And that's just because it was stored a long time uh, in the box. Not wrong or anything, it's just from storage. And I did put that in the description that there is some curving to the card, but it should lay flat with the mailing and uh, the cardstock should lay it out a little bit more. But I tightened them up in the boxes I have should tighten those up over time. But I did, anytime there is a substantial like curving on there, I'll put that in the description. And if the customer's not satisfied uh, with the card, I'll either try to send them one that's not as curved or, you know, give them a refund and replace, you know, get the card back or whatever. So don't be afraid to sell a card like that. Just make sure people know uh, that it has it in there, but that's the Theodore Roosevelt, sold between four and five dollars. The next one is a building. It's Masonic Temple in Chicago. This is a huge building. So this is a divided back card from not too sure when it was. So there, there it is right there. It's an older card. It has a one cent stamp on it. It's posted. But it just, just feeling this card, you know it's vintage. So that's the Masonic Temple in Chicago. Right there. Sold between 4 and $5. Next one is just a chrome card. The All Petite Pocket Rotisserie. I think it's a restaurant. Yeah, it looks like a restaurant. It's got some older cars in there. And nice sky. Just a chrome card sold between 4 and $5. Good card stock. Nice solid card. So that one sold. Next one is what they call these cards uh, are rounded corners uh, on here. They're not from where, they're rounded corners, and it's a few card. It's Lewis and Clark Highway near Old Man Creek, Idaho. So it's basically a river, some mountains, just a view card, and it's a chrome card unposted. But it does have the rounded corners. You can put that in the description or the title if you want. I don't think it'll make a difference uh, when they sell it, but the scanner should pick up the rounded corners. Uh, they're just a nice uh, little extra. But that's a few cards sold between four and five dollars. Same order, uh, another Lewis and Clark thing, same card around the corners. So we sold two of those, four to five dollars. Next one is another naval boat. Now with that naval haul, a lot of times when you get a big lot of stuff, a lot of it'll sell right away and stuff. Well, what these Navy boats are going to do, all these cards like this one is the USS George Washington uh, aircraft carrier. 
And this one's got a little curve too, but not real bad. And it's on regular cardstock. But what they're going to do, they, they fall right into my collection and in, in my inventory. And they sell just about as fast as other cards. So I get a good mixture. Maybe I'll sell one today, none tomorrow, three the next day, maybe none for two days. So it's going to take a while to sell all these cards and get my return on investment. Uh, it, it, it was a good pickup, but it, it's not going to be a fast flip. But that's the USS George Washington. I probably have 150, 200 of these cards. So they just sit in the box as they sell. eBay takes the quantity down, tells HIP to take the quantity down, and on there. So nice card, unused. All these Navy ship cards mostly are uh, unused. I did have a question. Do I mark postcards new or used? I mark all postcards used. One reason there is I don't know the history of a lot of the cards. I don't know if they're, they're not in original packaging. Plus, it gives you the description box that I can put a disclaimer. I have a basic disclaimer that I put in every listing. I do add to it if there's like curving or something special, but I do have a basic uh, thing. I cut and pasted that years ago from somebody else and modified it. So if you want to look at one of my listings in the SM Postcard Store and look at that disclaimer, go ahead and use that. Um, you don't have to type it out every time. It kind of covers everything with a vintage postcard. So people know when they buy a vintage postcard, it's going to have some wear on it. It's going to have some writing on the front or back. But you want to disclaim that. But you don't need to write that out every time. Make a template or sell some or however you do it. Cut your time down. Uh, go out there and copy that. The next card that sold is uh, the Amish Farm and House. Open to visitors. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. This is what I, I always call these drawing cards. It looks like someone drew a picture of the Amish farm. And you got the little kids, the mom and dad, and the Amish hat on there. So this was a souvenir card or advertisement card. It's on a lighter card stock. Um, not real heavy card stock. But I call these like drawing cards in my mind. Unofficial term. So that sold between 4 and $5. Next, same order. An Amish barn raising. I've sold this card a few times or ones of it. Greetings from Amish country, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So they're building a barn. I guess that's a big thing when they do a barn raising. It's unposted. This is on a thicker card stock. And everything's pretty good with this card. So that was an order. The person was looking for Amish. Both of those cards sold between 4 and $5. And they'll go together in the envelope. The next one is, I sell a lot of these missions. A lot of people would not list these cards because they see them all over the place. This is the Santa Barbara Mission, founded in 1786 in Santa Barbara, California. An older card. It's a divided back. It's not used, uh, posted. It does have the little writing on there. And I say it in every video, I don't take that off. I leave it up to the collector. It, one, it adds time to me doing it. Two, I'm not good at it. I'll smudge it. The collector, it just it's part of the history of the card. So I just leave it on there. But it's unposted. But that's the missions. You get a lot of these Western California missions. Um, Capistrano. There's one that just burned. Gabriel, I think, is the one that burned uh, uh, this year or, or, or late last year. That one sold. I sold a lot of those once that happens. Did I price them up? No. I just They just sell. But I don't actively look for them, but I get them in a lot of lots. Of there but I will list them and they, they do take a while to sell but they do sell and I'll do two more cards and then I'll get into the special topic this is the Lieutenant Robert E. Lee Riverboat Riverfront St. Louis Missouri so river boats I'm really into boats now with all those naval cards so boats always do pretty well they're not the highest price cards in my inventory but they do move and that's the riverboat Robert E. Lee in St. Louis, Missouri, Chrome cards sold between four and five dollars. Now let me do this last card here, and then I'll get into the special topic: skyscraper cards. So this is the Jungle Queen Circular Jungle and Everglades Cruise in Fort Lauderdale. So it's kind of a mosaic of three different views. You got a table with some stuff. You got a guy messing with an alligator, and you got the jungle boot. So it's kind of a souvenir card. New Jungle Queen. Uh, under a Coast Guard inspection, it says on the back a little bit of writing, you know, it's on there, but it's an unposted card. Good card stock, sold between four and five dollars. Topic today, I did some research, and these cards are actually called 
skyscraper card postcards. Now, if you put a search into eBay and skyscraper postcards, you're going to get a bunch of stuff. You're going to get uh, linen, chromes, and just you know regular postcards of skyscrapers. But these are specially made skyscraper postcards. So I'm going to put it right down here. What the what the information I did find on them? I didn't find a lot of information, but I'm still searching. So if anybody sees anything, please send it to me, and I'll add it to the my uh, research material. So the next time if I update this video, I'll add that to it. So skyscraper card was a trade name by Newberg, IG Newberg, I think how you say that, of New York for their two and a half by six inch novelty postcards. So it was a trade name used by this company Newberg of New York for their two and a half six inch novelty postcards. So another novelty postcards depicting scenes of New York City in black and white half tones. And I got four examples here from my collection that I'll show you what a black and white half tone looks like. So the and another keyword here, New York City. So these are skyscrapers in New York City, black and white half tones with a trade name of skyscraper card. These cards were manufactured in Germany prior to the First World War. Not the Second World War, the First World War. So these cards were manufactured in Germany prior to the First World War. Now when people see cards like that, oh, they gotta be worth 50, 100, you know, 500. No, just because they're old doesn't mean they're worth a lot of money. They are unique. The prices that I see on these cards, that I've done some research, I don't see a lot of solds uh, on eBay or of the other sites. I don't see a lot of listings of these, but I've seen them listed anywhere from $25, $30 down to $2. So it just depends what people know about them and what sells. But So I put the range on these about $5 to $20. Now depending on subject condition and novelty on there, it could go up more. But that that's normally where they fall. So to me, I get the card it might be priced a little higher than I would a nor normal card, but I do actively search for these cards when I'm out in the wild, but I don't see them that often. You might get them in an estate sale or stuff like that. Maybe the East Coast and New York might get a little bit more, but skyscraper postcards. I'm going to show you four examples. Now, I just did a video the other couple weeks ago about bookmark postcards. Guess what these look like? These look like book bookmark postcards. So that's a normal postcard, and you tell it's half the size. So let me see if I can do this here. It's a little bit taller than a normal one, but it's half the width, so it's kind of like a bookmark postcard. But as you see here, this one is um, Grace Church in New York City. This is a black and white half tone is what they call it. So there's the church, it's straight up and down, it's like a bookmark, it's not this way, it's a vertical. And if you look on the back, it says right there, the skyscraper card. So that's the trade name, skyscraper card. It does have the divided line inside, where you can put the message and the address. This has a one cent stamp on there, but it says the skyscraper card is what you want to look for. So if you see like a bookmark postcard and it has a skyscraper and it says that on the back, you know this is a older trade name card on there. So this is the Grace Church black and white half tone. The next one I got to show you, where did I put them, is the Invest City Investing Building in New York City. Right down here at the bottom, I noticed they put the names of the buildings and stuff. But that's another one right there. Long and skinny, two and a half by six inches. And this one doesn't have any writing. You can see it real clear. The skyscraper card. So that's what you want to look for. So this is an unposted one of the invest city investing building. The last two I got, this one is Metropolitan Life Building, New York. And if you notice, there's the name. Half tone, black and white, six inch by two and a half. And this one's unposted and it says the skyscraper card as well. It does have the line for address and the message. And it does have a stamp box right up there. It's one cent stamp all over the globe. 
So those stamp boxes mean something. So we'll get into that probably later on. But that's that one of the Metropolitan Life Building. And the last example I got is the Singer Building, New York City. Highest building in the world when they did this. 41 stories, 621 feet high. So that's the Singer Building in New York City. Right down there is a little writing. They did a real good job with these cards. And the skyscraper cards on the back. That's what you want to look for. The skyscraper card. So if you find a bookmark you think it's a bookmark card and it says the skyscraper card that's what it is and you want to put that in your titles and stuff like that uh, when you're listing them because they are unique I don't see a lot of them they're not the highest price card but they are different so <clears throat> skyscraper postcards who knew now let me go and finish up the cards from uh, eBay and then I'll get into the terminology rule free delivery and tell you a little bit about that what I found <clears throat> so the next uh, item that sold is not a postcard remember I sell trade cards decals different things this is another one of those travel decals they've been doing really good they've been selling that's uh, one of those sticky you go in a travel trailer or a car and you stick them in the window on there this, and this sold about $5.95 I think so between five and six dollars that's another one of those I got in that lot and this is a vintage one you can just tell um, when I look at them because there's no dates or anything on these things uh, is there no nope, no dates so I thought it was a map when I looked on uh, eBay when it sold I thought it was a map card that I sold but it was a decal I don't have too many left so I'm gonna have to go out and try to see if I can find some more of those the next card that sold is a duck no it's not an animal it's a boat they call these ducks Right there, they went in the water. And this is in the Wisconsin Dell area. Unposted card. Nice action shot. He's going right in the water of a duck. So sold between four and five dollars. So I sold a duck. Now this order, keep dropping things. This order, this guy bought four cards of Florida things. Now I did buy oh probably about three or four thousand Florida cards about a year and a half ago. And I mixed them in with everything else. But they Florida cards will sell. A lot of people have migrated down there that want there or they go on vacation. Not the price, most expensive cards I got, but they do sell. So these four cards here, this is Miami Beach, Florida. And I and the title, I just Beach Goers, Miami, Florida. And someone bought this nice picture of a beach scene with palm trees and an umbrella. This is posted in 19... 1987 so this is a newer card uh, on there and it's posted next one is people ask me about these types of cards all the time these are called what I call banner cards um, on there they're basically a lot of times they're generically made um, with generic pictures and they go around to different places and the companies can put whatever they want inside here they're already made and they just when they print them they put the writing in there so these are banner cards on there and this has got a picture of uh, the beach in there so another Florida beach scene tropical scenes of Florida so very generic card they probably sold all over Florida uh, the manufacturer and publishers on there but banner cards do they do sell four to five dollars this is a Sherwood Court like a motel but this has got a sign right there see the sign sign sell this is a nice chrome card and it is posted on the back another Florida card and it's got a two cent stamp on there but Sherwood Court so that's some kind of place someone stayed now the next one is what I call artist depiction cards or whatever half block from the ocean the president hotel you can tell it's not a real picture it's just like a drawing um, on there of the hotel unposted nice heavy card stock good souvenir card probably found it at the desk say hey I stayed here but sold between four and five dollars so four cards <clears throat> sold between four and five dollars that's sixteen bucks you know what do you got into them so this last one is a white border card from 1923 and I can tell it's a white border card just by feeling it a lot of people think white border cards just have a border you gotta be careful they're not white border cards they're kind of elusive in some things I really like white borders they're just made I just tend to find the 
any white borders I pick up pretty much. But this is what they call the Mount Jefferson Plain Switchback Railroad, Mount Chunk, Pennsylvania. So some kind of switchback railroad. It's got some scenes in here. Now this car did have a little bend on the corner there. Uh, right there, but it should, for 1923, not bad at all. And that's what the postmark is. It is posted. There is no stamp on there. Um, but it did go through, but there's no stamp, so I don't know what the history is. But that's a white border card sold between 4 and $5. So that was 18 cards on eBay that we sold. So now let me get into the term I have for data, definition. The best way to learn about postcards is to understand the terminology. Speak to speak, walk to walk or just learn more about the history of postcards so as you get through it your knowledge will accumulate and you feel a lot co more comfortable uh, buying cards, selling cards, talking about cards and stuff like that. Repetitiveness uh, will give you experience. A lot of people say I'm skilled. Skill to me is experience. If you go to school and you learn a trade and you go out and do it for 10 years, you got 10 years experience, you got a skill. So the more you do postcards, the more experience you get, the more skill. I'm in a different part of the journey than you are. You're in a different part of the journey than the other person is. So we're just in different parts of journeys and some people have been knowing a lot longer than I have, some people less, they're just starting out. You just gotta do it. You just gotta get the experience and that will build the skills. So the term I have today and I'll put it right down here and read along, is rural free delivery. Now, some people live in cities don't understand what rural is. Rural is outside a city. It's out in the country, unincorporated land sometimes, and we can actually see the stars. If I'm in Chicago at night, I can't see the stars because of all the lights in the city, but if where I live, I can look out my back door and I can see stars because we don't have all that light. They call it light pollution down here. Uh, so we're out in the rural free delivery. So let me go ahead and give you the basic definition I found. Rural free delivery, a mail delivery service provided to rural areas by the U.S. Post Office. Postage was traditionally paid to cover the cost of transporting mail from the post office to post office. Home delivery was only available through private companies for an additional fee. Interesting. So they didn't deliver to homes. You paid the postage, and it was just going from post office to post office when it first started. Now, in 1863, that the U.S. Post Office started city free delivery to locations with over 10,000 inhabitants. So New York City, Chicago. So that in 1863, they started delivering in the cities. This represented less than a quarter of the nation's population for even with rising urbanization, most Americans continued to live in rural environments. So a lot of people weren't in the cities yet. In 1896, an experiment, the government doing experiments? 1896, an experiment was initiated to deliver mail to regions outside of cities, rural areas, which was a difficult task since most mail went out by horse and buggy. <laughs> so they're delivering mail with a horse and buggy until the service was motorized in 1914. So when they first started delivering, they did it with horses. Interesting. By 1902, rural free delivery became an official policy. So in 1902, that's when they said, hey, you got to deliver mail to everywhere. This new service greatly fed the early postcard craze as it created a new audience of millions. So we, the reason I picked the rural free delivery as a term is that last sentence right down there at the, what I just said. By 1902, rural free, rural free delivery became official policy in 1902. This new service greatly fed the early postcard craze. Right there, caught my eye and said, I've got to talk about this. So, golden age of postcards coming up. People started getting mail delivered to their home and it created an audience of millions of people. So, back in the day, it, you weren't entitled to get your mail. You had to go to the post office. Now, when I uh, had my restaurant in a small town, they didn't deliver mail to my restaurant. I had to walk over to the post office. There was only a town of about 900 to 1,000 people. 
And so every day I would go over to the local butcher, pick up the meat for the restaurant, and I would stop by during that trip, just walk over and get my mail out of the post office box. A lot of places have that in some areas where they don't deliver, but 1902, rural free delivery, help postcards. We probably wouldn't be here talking today if they didn't do that. So rural free delivery, who knew? Now let me go ahead and do the cards that sold on Etsy and the cards that sold on Hip Postcard. Now as I go through these what sold, sometimes it can drag out, some people think, but a lot of people like the what sold because they see the variety. They're starting to get what I'm, reason I'm doing it. It's not about the dollars or how many cards, it's the variety to look for. As you notice, it was chrome cards, white border cards, buildings, uh, Florida. So all the cards, I list everything, pretty much. I got that now. Birthday cards, greeting cards, some continentals. Yeah, I, I, I kind of see from my trend over the years what sells and don't. So I, I'll list them if I get them, but I don't actually search for some items. So the first card that sold on Etsy was the Mackinac Bridge. I always list the Mackinac Bridge. It's a great seller, four to five dollars, 1970 postcard. Now, if you notice, this has got a white border on. That's not white border. It's a chrome card. You can look right there with the glistening I just did with the shine. It will help you determine. But that's a 1970 card, so there's no way that's a white border. Now, it is technically a white border card that's got a white border on it, but it's not from the era that postcard classified of white border. So that's the Mackinac Bridge. Sold between 4 and $5. The next one that sold on Etsy was, I really don't know how to say this, I'm probably going to destroy this name, Zanders Z Frankenmuth Chicken Dinners, Michigan. So this, or, this order is one of, th of three card order on Etsy, so they're all Michigan. But this is, I don't know how to say that name right there, but that's the chicken dinner place right there and there. It's unposted. Good heavy star talk, so it was uh, on there. And the last one is Antique Automobiles Henry Ford Muse Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. So this guy picked out stuff from Michigan, but that's the Henry Ford Automobile Museum. And this is another chrome card, even though it has a white border. And see all the nice and shiny. This is a 70s card as well. So that's the three cards that sold on Etsy. Now Etsy, I don't sell as many cards on Etsy. But I've been doing an experiment. I've been real busy with these naval postcards. Uh, I had some family stuff. I just haven't had a lot of time to list in the last seven days. But for the last 14 days, I haven't listed anything on Etsy. I just let it go because that's my lower quantity site, that and hip. I was focusing on doing some on eBay every day, but I was kind of busy with some stuff. You know what? I'm still selling the same number of cards on Etsy. I haven't listed in two weeks and I'm still selling cards. A lot of people get caught up in what they hear on Facebook and stuff. If I don't list, I'm not going to sell. On Etsy, I'm doing just fine. And I'm listing lower on eBay and I'm doing just fine. I'm doing st still what I'm doing. Um, does it help, I think, with listing? Yeah, it puts some new stuff in your store uh, and shows eBay that you're active and stuff. But I don't, there's still nothing out there that tells me that that is really going to sell me more cards to make a difference if I list or don't list every day. So, but now on HIP postcards, now HIP is my slowest. So eBay, I sell about 80% of my cards. Etsy, 15% uh, and HIP about five. So my data tells me that. Now what I feel is not what my data tells me. So where do I focus? I focus on eBay more than I do Etsy and HIP. Etsy is starting to climb. I am starting to get a nice little steeper uh, incline on the Etsy sales. So it, it is building up. HIP is kind of staying the same, but I focus there. So the one, two cards are sold on HIP. I just listed this card yesterday, less than 24 hours it sold. I kind of questioned if it would ever sell. This is um, some Senator Aldrich's estate, Warwick, Rhode Island. It's a Chrome card. And I can't tell when it was posted, but it has a four cent stamp on it. But someone knows something about this house or whatever. Warwick, and it is a Chrome card, you'll see it shine. But 
Some people probably wouldn't list this card because it just says Warwick, Rhode Island, Senator Albrecht's house. There's really nothing going on. Sold four to five dollars on him. The next one came from the Naval Ship Lot. Uh, and it sold on hip and I thought this was one of the cooler cards I did price this one up a little higher because Zeppelins sell anything with a Zeppelin They sell and this Zeppelin is actually um, docked on it to a ship it looks like And that's a USS Pat Coda. That's the name of the ship right there But that is one of the cool cards. I probably have about 200 of these cards So this is the first one that sold but if you notice out of all the cards, out of the 20, the 23 cards, I think I sold maybe two or three boats. So by buying that big lot, it's not like I'm selling, you know, I'm going to have a stack of 2,000 cards being sold. It just fits into the inventory. But I did sell 23 cards. Right here is what it looks like on there. It's about $95 in sales. And they'll go out this morning uh, with there. Uh, when I pack them up. So not a bad day. Now tomorrow I might sell 10 cards. Next day I sell 5 cards. It's the roller coaster. I manage my business by monthly numbers. I also manage by the number of cards sold. I don't actually look at the dollars mostly sold because it all averages out. If I sell a card for $6 and I sell a card for $4, you know, $5, it will average out. So I look at the number of cards and I look and see if I'm making it for the month, how many cards did I you know, forecasted that I wanted to do in my head by the end of the month. So I do keep track of what I sell on each site, but I manage it by the month. So if I have a slow day for three days, I'm not worried because I'm still making my numbers or I still have time. So we're, uh, you know, we're halfway through the month. So got time to make up and I'm actually above average for the month so far, even though I didn't list a lot in the last two weeks. Okay, so now we're gonna get into viewer comments. Where do I get viewer comments? I get them from emails. I get them on eBay. I get them uh, through the videos here. There's a comment section. And I try to go through and grab what I can out of them on there. So the first viewer comment is, how do you manage refunds? So I've talked about this a few times before, um, but this was a straight question. So refunds is an expense that is going to be a part of any retail reselling business. I treat it as an expense. So every month I know I forecast 3% of my sales will be refunds or returns. Now my challenge is, so let's say that 3% equals $100, just for simplicity. So every month I know I'm going to expense out $100 in refunds. My job is to make sure I have correct listings, good photos, uh, good communication, good packing, and everything to make sure to reduce that $100 down to close to zero as possible. So, but I do forecast for 3% of my sales will be refunded. Now, I am running in the last two years about a 0.5%. The post office last year didn't help things, but about a half a percent is what I'm running because I actively manage this. I don't get a lot of returns. I have 60 day re, uh, free returns, hassle free, no problems. I'll take it back. I'll just resell it or whatever. And I do non immediate pay. So refunds are part of business. So if you if you forecast it and be proactive about it, knowing that, you know, maybe you say one percent of my sales are going to be refunds. Your job is to manage that. If I get a refund. I don't do partials. It's hey, send it back. I don't care if it's a five dollar thing. I want it back, and it's just the way I do it. But refunds are part of business. Just take care of them. Move on. Don't. If you sold the twenty dollar postcard, and two days later, you know, once they get it, and they want to return it, didn't like it. Don't. It, it's business. Just, just take the return and get it over and move on. That's what I tell people. Don't worry about it or whatever because it happens it will happen it's part of business but if you if I start going over three percent so say I said for a hundred dollars a month and I start returning hundred and fifty dollars a month then I gotta be a little more aggressive I've got to you know push back a little bit more or change the way I'm doing things but right now what I'm doing is okay but I and I treat each refund individual transaction and that's what they mean by transaction it's an individual transaction. 
We, well, some people play games, yeah. But don't, they're, that's a small portion of people on eBay. Even in my toy store, very rarely do I get returns. You know, I, I just try to uh, make sure I got quality products and good pictures and description and ship it out on time and stuff like that. So that's refunds. I, I don't lose sleep over them. The next question I got is, who helps you with postcards? So a lot of people say, there's, you know, you got a lot of listings, who helped you? So I'm gonna show you a picture here of my best stamp, stamper, envelope person on my payroll. Here she is. That's my seven-year-old granddaughter. The only thing it cost me is, as you can see, is a bag of chips and watching a iPad while she does it. So she loves putting stamps on envelopes. So with uh, envelopes, I still have to put a stamp on there for Etsy and HIP uh, and some of the decal things that don't go on the eBay standard envelope. So I get a roll of stamps, she'll put the stamp there, and then I have a stamp for a return address. She'll stamp the envelope here. Uh, the only thing is I had maybe a couple casualties of envelopes that didn't get stamped real well. Uh, but she's pretty good at it. So she'll come, she wanted to help, so I set her up at the little desk there and she'll stamp uh, envelopes and eat her chips and put them on there for me. And also my son, uh, when he comes over, or he'll do some drafts once in a while, uh, nothing big, uh, just to help out. And there he's in another town and he has a small three-year-old, so he doesn't get much time to do things in. He has a full-time job. So when he's over, they'll help me carry things and stuff like that, but I don't have any employees, uh, especially her, so she's the boss. But that, if you can get the family involved in your business like that, you know, they'll learn. So she's seven years old. She'll move up. She'll get to know what Chrome's are. Next thing she'll do is start scanning postcards. Maybe she'll start listing. You know, older. You know, hit them while they're young. But yeah, I don't have employees. Most of it's done by me. The next one. Now this question I, I, I put on here. Even though I do have a video, uh, the best envelope to mail postcards. Um, I go through pretty intensively about the grades of, of envelopes and stuff in that video on there. And I think there's a card right up here or somewhere on there. You'll see it at the end of the video. But you need to watch that if you have any questions about mailing. But this person uh, sounds like they're confused and maybe doing a little bit more work than they should. But I hopefully I did respond to her correctly. The comment was, isn't the maximum total weight for eBay standard envelope three ounces or less? Yes, it can't be over three ounces. I'm having trouble finding protective sleeve and or envelope plus postcard plus eBay label that will be at or under three ounces. How do you prepare your card for ma mailing and still keep the weight at under three ounces? Okay, so let's break that down. So finding a protective sleeve. The sleeves I use are the standard sleeves. They're two mil sleeves there's really no weight to these sleeves every postcard that I sell I put into a brand new sleeve so that's one card the envelope I use is a six and a half by four and a half rigid photo mailer that's not real heavy all cards up even the continentals will fit in this envelope I can put almost five cards in here four or five cards and be under an ounce now, if it goes higher to two ounces, then I use that in a standard envelope. Three ounces and so forth. But this envelope is rated with a GSM, and that's how they rate envelopes of 250. Your standard paper envelope is like a 10 or a 5. This is 250. I've sent thousands and thousands and thousands of postcards mailed in these envelopes with just a sleeve. A standard postcard that's not real expensive card really does not need a hard, rigid top loader. Um, you're giving money away uh, for doing that and these envelopes are fine. And now if this envelope is going to be destroyed, it doesn't matter if you put tape on it, put it in a rigid thing, it's going to get there. I've never had one destroyed. Now I've had the label Maybe I put a label on there, the small label I used to use before eBay standard envelope. If I put like five cards in there, 
the machine would catch it sometimes. But with the eBay standard envelope, it covers the whole thing here really good. Never have a problem. So one ounce on eBay standard envelope, this is on eBay, is 51 cents as of today. Two ounces is 71 cents. Three ounces is 91 cents. So postcard, just a sleeve. What it does is it allows people to put them right in their collection and keeps the scratching down. But I could probably even get, not even put a sleeve in there. I just do it because it's just a little extra. And it goes in the envelope and it gets mailed out. And that, and I can put four to five cards on at one ounce in here. And then if it goes up to higher, I just put two ounces, pay 71 cents. But to use a hard sleeve and all that stuff, if you're putting stickers, uh, cards in there, you're putting other stuff, packing slip, there's no, I've never, ever, ever in the years I've done it, put a packing slip in there. They can see what they bought online. Thank you cards, I don't use those. I'm not going to pay $20 for 100 cards when I can do that. I can put a stamp. I buy one of these stamps for like $12, $15. And I get like 20,000 stamps out of it. It's just once uh, right on the back of the thing. I really don't even need to do that, but it does give it a little bit of a marketing thing on there. But I, I, I get envelopes in and it has stickers, thank you cards, and all this other stuff, plastic envelopes. Uh, there, there's really no, I, it, to me, I just throw it away. I don't even look at it, maybe because I'm a seller. But just stamp them, put them in there. Get them. They just want the postcard. They'll buy, you know, you can put more in there. So that's how I keep it down. But while I'm on that subject, I'm going to show you, <laughs> show you some examples. I got the weirdest postcard shipping I've ever gotten. I saved it. So I got this in the mail. I'll try not to show the address uh, on there. I got this in the mail, and you're wondering, what the heck is this? It's got duct tape on it. It's real thick. This is one postcard. I think it was about $5. One postcard. It's got duct tape, and, I, and I, when I went to open it, I slid it down the middle because I thought it was a box, but it's not. It's two pieces of styrofoam, and they ended up putting the postcard in the middle of two pieces of heavy insulated styrofoam and then taping it with duct tape and putting it in there so when I got it I really didn't know how to open it and there's the postcard inside two pieces of styrofoam this person this thing was six ounces so they paid probably four dollars to ship it to me the card I bought I think was five dollars let's say by the time eBay gets done with it and stuff, this person paid me to buy this postcard. So there's no reason for that, but I thought I would keep it and show you. It was, I'm keeping this. This is this is the best. I mean, I gave him good feedback. It came in, it was perfect. I, there was no problem with the postcard. I'm not gonna ding anybody on their packaging or anything, but I wouldn't use duct tape. They don't like that in the post office. And it doesn't really, you know, do it. But that, that, this is the winner so far. I've never seen it. But just to answer the question again about on there, this is another envelope that I get postcards in. This is too big for a standard postcard. It, this is, that's like a six by eight by eight four. This is the one I use here, and that's the other one. This is a heavier postcard. This is a higher GSM. So you're gonna get weight on there. It's got the tear thing on there. They put 22, 30, 42, 50. and they paid about nine. They put about 90, 90 cents to a dollar worth of stamps on there, and they didn't need to do that. They could, they just get these cheaper envelopes, uh, and they could have got away with 51 cents. Next thing is people put it in here, uh, and they put cardboard inside, uh, you know, stuff like that. This one. I couldn't even tell you what they they charge on there, but there's no reason to do that. And if you're going to get into postcards, the best thing I tell people to do is go out there and buy a couple dozen or so postcards from all different sellers. And when you get them, see how they're packaged. Pick the one you like. Don't compare yourself to others. You don't have to do what I do, but pick the one. Now, if you pick this, 
then I got questions for you. But go out there and buy postcards from people and you'll see what you like and not like. What was the best presentation when you got it? When I got to go through an envelope and pull out all the crap and to get to the postcard I want, I want to see the postcard. I want to see what's, what I bought. Not all that other stuff. I'll come back to your site if I need to. You know, but some people tape it up so much that I'm gonna, sometimes I think I'm going to cut my finger I'm going to cut the postcard. There's no reason, when these cards seal, when these post, when these seal or poly bag seal, there's no reason to put tape on there. This will not open without destroying this envelope. You know, I, I've never had one open on there. Like I said, I, I don't have much re returns at all. But yeah, to keep it under three ounces, very simple. Go look at this video. Uh, it's going to pop up here, right here. It's the best envelopes for mailing postcards. I go in depth about the postcards. I also do the what's sold and some other thing I think in there. But this is uh, some research I did on that. That's all I got for today. We appreciate you watching and I'll catch you on the next one.